Good morning. I hope you're all doing great and enjoying these videos. After doing a couple of videos on the value of Bible software packages, especially the big three, Accordance, Logos, and Olive Tree, a number of people have asked about the free software packages. Have you ever wondered if the free Bible software packages are any good? Which ones are better? What do you get with the free Bible software packages? Which one's the better package? And which ones would I recommend? That's the goal of this video, so let's jump in. My name is David Parrish, and the goal of this channel, The Caffeinated Bible, is to take what I've been teaching in seminary and graduate schools in the areas of theology, Greek, and linguistics, and bring it to anyone, anywhere on the internet. So if you like this content, please subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up, and most importantly, let other people know about it by hitting that share button. Thanks. In looking at the free Bible software packages, the first thing you need to keep in mind is you get what you pay for. The free Bible software packages are free because they make use of public domain Bible translations, books, concordances, dictionaries, and other resources. What does that mean? Well, in the United States, if someone copyrights a work, say a Bible translation, they own the rights to that for 95 years or 70 years after the author's death. But in general, for most biblical resources, the public domain laws of copyright are what apply. This means that most free Bible software applications include resources that are at least 70 or 95 years old at the earliest. If you consider the speed and the amount of information and knowledge that we've accumulated in the past 100 years, or even in the past 20 years, you need to realize the limitations of these resources. Consider, for example, smartphones, computers, air travel, space exploration, medical advances, archeological discoveries, and advances in linguistics. This isn't meant to put you off the free Bible software packages, but it's just to let you know from the very start that what they offer has some limitations upon it. But let's look at what they actually do offer you. Now, if you want to skip ahead, I'm going to cover the following packages. Bible Discovery, Bible Gateway, Blue Letter Bible, E-Sword, and Pocket Bible. And over here, I'll include pretty close estimation as to the time when I'm going to cover those in the video. I'll also include links to these free software packages and their websites in the description section underneath as well. And as a free tip, I'm going to give this to you for absolutely free. In the description section underneath the videos, many good YouTube channels will include a lot of really great information down there as well. So be sure to check them out. Let me give you my criteria for ranking these packages. I'm sorry, it's a holdover from my being a professor for so long. And if you stick around till the end, I'll give you my thoughts on which package is the best. First criteria, does the software package include more recent translations? For example, do they include the New English Translation, NET, the English Standard Version, ESV, the NIV? Oftentimes, publishers might offer them the use of their translation for free or give them a really great deal. Second, do they offer more recent resources, such as Bible dictionaries, one-volume commentaries, maps, study Bibles, or even study Bible notes? This is where they often have the greatest limitations. Third. Do they include a tagging system like Strong's to link to dictionaries and other resources? Fourth, do they offer an upgrade option? If you really like that package, do they offer a paid version with more resources and more recent ones? This way, you're not stuck with a dead-end resource. You really love it, but you've reached the limits of what you can do with that particular package. Now the big three, Accordance, Logos, and Olive Tree, all offer free or trial versions with extensive upgrade options. Do these packages I'm going to discuss today have upgrade options for you to get more recent or better resources? Fifth, the software needs to be available offline. Can you download it and use it without being connected to the internet? And related to this, I'm looking to see if this software runs on Macs, PCs, as well as smartphones and tablets. Now, what really surprised me in doing this study is just how cross-platform compatible so many of these free software packages are. 
So kudos to their developers. And one final note, there are a fair number of free Bible software packages that are focused more on devotional types of use, daily readings of the Bible. UVerse is perhaps the best known of these Bible reader apps. I'm not gonna be covering apps along those lines in this video. I'm gonna be focusing on those that offer you the ability to actually dig in and do some study and research on the biblical text that you're interested in. Before I jump in, please realize that these are my impressions and thoughts. It's a lot like my grading papers. I put my comments and thoughts on the papers and judge them by the work that other people are doing. At the same time, I tell my students, I'm always willing to listen to your feedback. If you don't think I got what you're arguing right, let me know. I'm always willing to take a second look at your paper and lower the grade if you like. So if you don't think I got a good feel for one of these software packages, please leave a polite comment, especially if you can give some positive light on perhaps some of the features or what you appreciate about that package. That would really help others who are checking out software packages as well. Bible Discovery App. They have a free and paid version of this app. In the free version, they have a good selection of recent translations. These include the Net Bible, Lexham English Bible, World English Bible. Of special note is they have a pretty good selection of Spanish, German, Indonesian, and other languages as well. So for the international viewers, this is a good one for you to check out, see if they've got your language. Many, if not most of the Bibles they have are older though. It does have an interlinear and some tagging features built into the free version of the software. As far as I can tell, if you wish to include any Bible dictionaries in this software, it's gonna cost you. And the commentaries they offer are all public domain, written in the 1800s or older. As I've read reviews on this software, one red flag was raised. First, some complain that the free version is only free for 14 days. I didn't try it for more than two weeks, and I couldn't find that on their website. So if anyone has tried this software, can you let us know if this is correct or not? Which brings up another point. To use the cross-references and other useful features of this software package, you need to upgrade to one of their paid versions. Not much, 10 to $20, but it's not completely free. So here's my ranking. Most recent versions of the Bible gets a 10 out of 10. Contemporary resources, only three out of 10. They don't have many there. Tagging, three out of 10. You need to upgrade to use it. Upgrade pathway, seven. And I give it that score because it's not very expensive, but it's not as powerful as others. Does it run offline and is available on platforms? Yes, gets a 10 there. Next software package, Bible Gateway. Bible Gateway is perhaps one of the larger and better known websites and free Bible software packages out there. However, I'm not quite sure what this package is trying to be. It has a heavy marketing focus on devotional approaches to the Bible, which is great. However, they also have Bible Gateway Plus, which is their subscription plan, and this is where their study resources are primarily found. They have a website and an app but often you will run into limitations that you need to pay four or $5 a month to gain access to some of the more advanced features. Most of their dictionaries and resources in the free version are either public domain or very limited in use. Now they have a subscription program, which is pretty reasonable, $50 a year, but their offering of commentaries and dictionaries, even at the paid version is pretty limited. They do have a good selection of study Bibles, once again, if you pay for the service. So what's their score? Recent versions of the Bible, 10. They have a very extensive list of Bibles, which includes numerous foreign languages, which I consider very, very important. And if you live somewhere outside the United States, please drop a comment and let us know if you use any of these free software packages and which languages you find most helpful for you. Contemporary resources. This only gets a two out of 10. You really need to pay for those features. Tagging, two out of 10 once again. This is primarily one of the features found in the paid upgrade. Upgrade Pathway, nine out of 10. They offer a very reasonable paid version, but its resources are pretty limited. Offline and various platform uses, they do a great job here, 10 out of 10. This brings us to Blue Letter Bible. The great thing about Blue Letter Bible is that it's free and I mean free. 
It has a little over 30 different translations for you to access. Some recent translations such as New King James, English Standard Version, and the NIV, and a few foreign languages. It's called the Blue Letter Bible because of little tags and hyperlinks that are blue within the text. They do have some Greek and Hebrew resources included, but they're older resources that are in the public domain. For example, Blue Letter Bible includes Thayer's Greek Lexicon, which was really published in the 1840s. Since then, Greek lexicons have come a long way and use much better linguistic approaches and much more research. However, these resources will give you an idea of what is available in the paid software programs and their original language tools. And if you're not interested in doing sort of really deep study, they will give you a good idea of what the word meant in the original languages. Blue Letter Bible also focuses on Bibles that reflect the Protestant canon of the Bible, 66 books of the Bible, not the 73 included in the Catholic canon, for example. Blue Letter Bible also includes interlinears, some commentaries from popular authors or older ones, and older dictionaries. It has the English Study Version's Global Study Bible and their maps. This is sort of an edited version of the English Study Bible, which I really like and I have a review of that. You can take a look up over here. And it seems to have a more international focus in how they've laid out their resources and their program. So, score for Blue Letter Bible. Recent versions of the Bible, 10 out of 10. Contemporary resources, maybe five. Tagging, nine, maybe 10. And you don't need to pay for their search features. Upgrade pathway, not applicable. Everything is free, free, free. Offline and cross-platform compatibility, I give this a seven because you really need to be online to do some of the searches and it doesn't run on all the different platforms that are available today. Moving right along here, this brings us to our next app, eSword. This runs on Android, Mac, OS, PC, and Macs. The free version includes the King James with Strong's Concordance, so tagging there. It also includes Smith's Bible Dictionary, Meyer's Commentary, and the Treasury of Scripture Knowledge. Once again, all public domain material that was written in the 1800s. The main version of eSword runs on the PC, but they also have versions for Android, iPhone, Mac, and iPad. While it runs free on the PC, you do pay some for the other platforms. For example, it's $4 for the iPhone version, which is really not bad at all. One of the strengths of eSword is that it includes many built-in study features that some of the other packages charge you for. You can also use Strong's Concordance to search for words, and it includes the ability to compare translations it includes some graphical and map resources. So what's my score for eSword? Recent versions of the Bible, 10 out of 10. Contemporary resources, maybe a four out of five. Tagging, they do a good job on this, nine out of 10. Upgrade pathway, not available. Does it run offline and is it available on all platforms? Nine, but some of the features require online access but it's available on almost all the platforms. Pocket Bible or Liridian. Now Liridian, which produces Pocket Bible, offers a free version of their software that includes a little over 40 books to choose from. But it does require that you register your software with them before you can download any of these titles. So it's free, but a little bit of a hassle. It does run on Mac and PC platforms, and it's interesting that on some platforms, it is called the Pocket Bible Study app, for example, on the iPhone. Like Olive Tree, it started on the mobile platforms like the Palm Pilot and developed from there. As a result, it seems to be most at home on a smartphone or a tablet. They do seem to have a pretty good selection of additional books and libraries that you can buy if you decide to invest in their software. However, their listings are not nearly as extensive as what you would get with a Corinth, Logos, or Olive Tree. Also, their free version does not offer you all the features of the paid version. In order to activate all of the search and display features within the software, you need to get a paid version of their software. And this seems to run about $10 a year. 
almost all the more recent versions of the software, such as the NIV or the English Standard Version, cost about $10 each. In this regard, I would not classify Laridian or Pocket Bible as free, but more a commercial program. It's reasonable, but you still need to pay for the resources that will really open up the power of this software. Recent versions of the Bible, four for the free version. You can purchase others, but once again, you're going to fork out money for that. And I'm looking at the free version here. Contemporary resources, three or four. Again, you have to pay for the more recent versions. Tagging, they do a great job here, 10. Upgrade pathway, probably around a nine. This should really be considered commercial software, but they offer a free version and the upgrades really aren't that expensive. Offline and cross-platform compatibility, 10. They do a great job there. The Sword Project. Now, don't confuse this with eSword. This is a completely different package. What really sets the Sword Project apart is the diversity of software that they offer. If you go to their site, crosswire.org, you can see that they have probably close to 20 different software packages in all sorts of different shapes and sizes. On the iPhone, the app is called Pocket Sword. But if you go to their website and click on the software menu, you can see the version that runs on your device and a link to downloading that. Pocket Sword runs on iOS and PCs, but it's not been verified for the Mac computer yet. They offer a pretty solid selection of recent translations, including the Net Bible and ESV. When you first download their software, it comes with a fairly limited set of resources, but then you can download more within the software. Most of their free resources that they offer are public domain. For example, Matthew Henry's concise commentary is included, but this is from around 1710. However, they do have a pretty extensive listing of commentaries from the 1800s for free. One particular strength of this package is its large selection of Bibles in different languages. Not counting the English Bible, I think there are around 20 different translations, including this software that I counted. Crosswire.org has the goal to make Bibles and Bible resources available to as many people as possible around the world. As a result, most of their offerings from those are in the public domain. So here's my grade for the SWORD project. Recent versions of the Bible, 10 out of 10. It seems like they're all doing really well in that area. Contemporary resources, maybe around a five. Tagging, not quite as strong as some of the others, so I would give that a seven. Upgrade pathway, it's really hard to say since they have so many different platforms that they offer their software in. Offline and cross-platform compatibility, really this is a 10. They have so many different software packages, but it's not like they have one that runs on all of them. They definitely offer programs on far more platforms and more shapes and styles than the other packages do. So, what's the final verdict here? What is my summary? Of all the free apps to study the Bible, I would recommend one of the free versions of Accordance, Logos, or Olive Tree. This might sound like a cop-out after discussing all these packages. Why? These commercial packages have a selection of resources to use for free, like the free software. However, the real strength of these packages is only appreciated once you fork over some of your hard-earned cash for them. So it's really not fair to compare these three to the free software packages. Now, I have a confession to make here. is that I'm sort of like a drug dealer. These free versions will be fine for some of you, but others of you will get addicted and you're gonna end up putting your wallet on a diet as a result. If you're using one of these free software packages and you like it, please drop a comment below so that others can benefit from your experience. Please don't trash one of these free software packages or the commercial ones. I'll simply delete comments along those lines. Let's build one another up here instead of tearing one another down. And before we go, if you click on my face up here, YouTube will subscribe you to my channel. If you click on the link over here, it will take you to my most recent video. And if you click over here, it'll take you to the video that YouTube thinks you would like to see most next. Until we meet again, peace.